or in making like fake YouTube videos. Stop fighting with people. It is just so draining. I don't want to be hypocritical because we all are doing our best. This doesn't even necessarily mean that you have to be like best friends with people. Protecting your femininity. This is what we're going to talk about today. There are two reasons why I was inspired to make this video. Number one, as you are familiar with the plethora of videos on my femininity playlist and even in my traditional living playlist, you know that we have discussed at length how there is kind of this attack or this overall influence on women's femininity in the Western world. We live in a highly masculine driven society and that isn't necessarily a bad thing. However, it is detrimental when it it comes to living your full feminine potential. And as a result, many women don't feel fully themselves. They are depressed. They are longing for fulfillment in many different places that are negative for them, such as substances, men that are not ideal for them. The list goes on and on. The second reason is because I found myself a little bit in a rut as of late when it comes to my femininity. The things I'm going to talk about today, a couple of them I have mentioned here and there in previous videos, but my channel truly is a show case of things that I'm continuously working on and lessons that I have learned. So I am always a work in progress. I am not this picture perfect feminine woman. I am easily influenced like you to negative things in this world. And I get off track just like any human being. But we are a channel of continuous improvement. It is okay to be imperfect. The goal is that you are always trying to better yourself. So all that being said, I do appreciate you coming back to the channel despite my inconsistency. I always love it when you hit the like button and I read every single comment as long as it is positive. The first thing I want to cover is the biggest pitfall that I have been dealing with, which is social media. I have harped on this channel before how we are not meant to live in a world where we are continuously comparing ourselves to other people. We are also not meant to live in a world where we are opening this black rectangle and seeing on our screen constant stimuli very quickly. This has affected my feminine spirit, not only for the concept of comparison, which is something that I have worked on in the past and I have overcome, but mostly due to the fact that it has kind of brought me to a frazzled state. And for me, being in my feminine spirit means slowing down. It means appreciating the little things. It means looking at my son over there who is playing with his bell toy that you might hear in the background. I've gotten into this negative habit of always looking at my phone and opening it up, which has prevented me from enjoying my life that I have worked so hard to get to, to being a full-time homemaker housewife, to having my son. And I think that this can also apply to masculinity. It is difficult for men to have masculine hobbies if they are continuously glued to their phone in a negative way. Social media is a great tool to connect with other like-minded people, to get inspiration, but it can also also expose us to many things that aren't as pleasant <laughs> that bring us down. I've talked about in the past how I try to avoid the news, but because I have a child now, I want to be connected to the current events that are going on in my country because I'm an emotional person and I don't want to be looking at the world through that lens. I want to have an unbiased opinion. So long story short, that leads me to consume the truth of what is out there through social media. However, things have gotten a little bit out of control and this has really put a downer on my day. So how can you protect your femininity? How am I doing it as a result of this kind of bump in the road that I'm experiencing? There are a couple of things that I'm going to do. I'm going to give myself lots of time where I will be going on social media and doing my best to put my phone somewhere else. I also used to be very diligent with this. I had another account on Instagram, for example, where I wasn't filling the for you page with people that I was following. I was simply looking up the content and the creators that I enjoyed. So that way, when I opened my phone, I had it programmed to that account, not my current one that I use for YouTube, but for my own personal use. And instead of being bombarded with stories and reels and pictures, I was able to go to my searches and I was able to look up the people that I enjoy doing their content and reading their captions. This is why I love YouTube and I always kind of dream about perhaps letting go of other social media platforms and just keeping YouTube because YouTube is a search engine. So you have that filter of not constantly being bombarded. Of course, there's the recommended page, but you can search for 
for what you are inspired and want to learn about at that particular time. So of course, I'm not going to leave you hanging. I'm still going to post on the Instagram page associated with YouTube. I won't leave it entirely, but I will try to strike a better balance. Second thing I want to talk about is speaking. I was raised with a mother who truly hated, I guess you could say, the importance of using kind words and watching your tone and being pleasant. And since I don't live with my mother anymore and I am also influenced by the world and how people speak around me, I'm not going to get rid of friends and people I socialize with because of how they choose to speak, but I'm going to make a better effort in protecting my femininity by watching if I'm using profanity. I used to never use vulgarity at all, but as things are getting worse in our culture and people feel the need to express themselves, which I do think is a good thing, some of them choose to use harsher words and for me that just isn't benefiting myself. So to reiterate, I'm just going to pay greater attention to the words that I use, to try to find softer words and to really try to bring a pleasant demeanor to everybody that I come in contact with, even the person at the grocery store or the drive through Speaking of talking, this is kind of a branch off of that point, but I think it's important to protect your femininity with positive self talk. Every situation that you're going through, you can turn it around in your mind to try to find the positive out of it. With today's world, the prices of everything, the corruption going on, it is so easy to just be fearful. And of course, you can find solace in the word of God, but regardless, all of us can make the mental effort to reframe how we are thinking. And this is going to protect your femininity because the truly feminine and vibrant woman is somebody who's able to bless other people with her positive spirit. The feminine is the person who is in charge of the home, for example, and being in charge of the aura of the home, even if you don't have a family, a home of your own, I want you to look at your presence whenever somebody comes in your space how are you helping them see the brighter side in life this absolutely does not mean that we do not vent about our problems but we are careful of how we vent our problems and who we vent to for me this means having a person that I'm able to talk about that negativity and work through finding the positive which is my mother and for you, that might mean actually, if you can, paying somebody like a therapist to have that vent session. And if you cannot pay anybody, a lot of people have found solace in journaling or in making like fake YouTube videos, just videoing all your emotions because there's something to be said about realization through getting your emotions out there. Again, we are not suppressing our emotions. We are feminine women who feel things. We are just trying to use them for good. Next up, I wanna talk about conflict. Simply put, stop fighting with people. I know, even those people on the internet, you just are so frustrated about what they believe and you simply wanna change their mind because they don't see or you wanna send them an article proving all the ways that they are wrong, just stop. It's not worth it. The fact of the matter is that many people have their mind made up. Even in your personal relationships, I don't fight with my husband anymore. I don't fight with my parents. My friends who have different beliefs about things, even though it pains me inside, I don't fight with them anymore. I just let them be. Because as a feminine woman, the best way to influence people is to live your life to the fullest, is to be an inspiration. This goes back to a concept I discussed a long time ago, which is feminine leadership. To lead as a feminine woman is to be such a radiant force because you feel so fulfilled and happy that people wonder what you have and then they will ask you the questions. And then then you can open up in a non-threatening space if you desire to help them change their mind or come to a realization about XYZ. Exercise. As somebody who is still in the postpartum phase, I don't know how long this lasts, but I assume it's about a year after you have a baby, I am definitely itching to lose that last 20 pounds. However, I've talked about in the past getting pregnant, my struggles with dieting and how I don't diet and how I have transitioned to more light exercise 
size. I do find for that many feminine women to protect your femininity, it is more useful to let go of HIIT workouts and high intensity type of exercise. Now, if you are somebody who thrives doing that kind of exercise, we are all different, but for many of us, we are going to be able to sustain a pattern of movement, an exercise regime if we do things such as Pilates, walking, ballet box, swimming, et cetera, et cetera. And it's going to take you longer to get to your goal. But I have noticed when I go into more intense exercise, which I did do for a couple weeks, it is just so draining. And this causes for me to be in a bad mood for the rest of the day because I am just dreading exercise versus like I talked about in my 2022 goals, when I give myself a block of time to exercise, but I have the flexibility of choosing what I want to do for that exercise, it is so much better for me. And as long as you stick with it, you will find results. Let's talk about work for all you career ladies out there. I'm going to say something that is potentially triggering, but you have to hear me out on the entire point. I am going to encourage you especially if you are married, to try to find ways to ease your workload. Some of you, this might mean gradually quitting over time. And I have been inspired over the past couple weeks to dive deeper into this concept and to take more of a bold stance on it through listening to another content creator that I probably will share in a life update video that I will make in a couple weeks. But I'm not telling you not to have goals, ambitions. What I'm telling you is that many of us in this world are just going to have jobs versus the few, of course, that are living out their passions through a career, through expressing their feminine creativity this way. But for a large majority, and I talk about and I talk in generalities on this channel, it is incredibly difficult for you to transition from a masculine spirit, which you might need in your work, to a more feminine spirit, which you need at home. And for this reason, it would be worthwhile to see where you can cut down. You might already have a job that allows you to have that work-life balance. Like I mentioned in the past, I know some people who are teachers, who are nurses, are better able to to express their feminine spirit that way. But this is another reason why I think that minimalism is popular in the traditional sphere. And I'm not talking about Japanese minimalism, for example, where you have just a couch and one pillow. I'm talking about the ways where you can truly downsize because the feminine spirit thrives off of freedom. It's good to be bored. I've talked about this in the past as well because the feminine is able to find hobbies that nourish her soul. And if you are a Catholic woman, I also want want you to dive deeper into the concept of vocations. If you are a mother and a wife, understand that this is your vocation and it is your responsibility to find a way to be able to live this out to the best of your ability. I don't want to be hypocritical because we all are doing our best in this economy. I understand that I'm coming from a very privileged position to be able to talk to you like this, but I'm just giving you the encouragement that some of you might need. Lastly, you need to have feminine influence in your life. For some of us, it is so difficult if we have moved to a new place or our friends have moved away. A lot of my friends have moved away. It has taken me years to find two friends that are local here. And I'm an introverted person. I have never been somebody who has easily put myself out there as I'm making a YouTube channel. But that's again, going back to the concept of social media. I find it funny when people used to think that I was making these videos for clout because honestly, I am very happy being a small YouTuber and just simply being friends with larger YouTubers and, and cheering them on and telling them, you go girl, you carry the traditional and femininity movement because I'm thriving here with my almost 30K channel. It's fine, I don't need more spotlight on me. <laughs> but anyway, that was a little bit of a tangent to talk about how just a couple of hours, even once a month with actual in life feminine friends, this doesn't even necessarily mean that you have to be like best friends with people, but even going to a mom group, I have found that it has been so beneficial to be around other feminine women, to exchange ideas. And even though many women are influenced from a more modern perspective, there are still feminine things such as home decor, for example, that you can talk about. It is going to give you that feminine influence and that feminine spark that you need once in a while. So my baby's trying to leap out of my arms. Don't worry about him. I had a comment before about his neck. He's totally fine even though he's at a weird angle, trust me. He's okay. <laughs> but I would like to know down below, what do you do to protect your femininity? What did you think of this video? If you liked it, give it a thumbs up and I will see you in the next one, lovely feminine friends. Bye-bye.